Hi, and welcome back. This week in Level E, we're covering lessons 25 through 28. You will need worksheets 12 through 15, A or B, the math card games book, the multiplication card stack, the basic number card stack, and the short multiplication chart. For lessons 25, the objectives are to learn about larger magic squares, to practice mental arithmetic, and to work with negative numbers. So the nine warm-up problems are on page um, worksheet 12. And after those, we will cover a bit of interesting history about magic squares. Next, you will draw a four by four magic square that was included in an engraving by the artist Albrecht Durer. Um, notice that the date of the work is included in the magic square. And so these are all things that you're gonna talk to your student about. Um, by now, you would expect that the rows and columns would add up to the same number, the magic number, and they do so. But in this magic square, the four by four magic square, there's other ways that you can find out what that number is. So let's take a look at what the lesson book is asking you to do. They want you to draw the four by four magic square. And then you're gonna fill in the numbers. So the first one is 16, three, two, 13, five, 10, 11, eight. You can tell my magic square is not very perfect. Um, and that's perfectly fine. When you guys are asked to draw something freehand for your student, it is completely understandable if it's not perfect. So don't get hung up on that. Okay. So as you would expect, um, if you, or if you add the numbers across, for example, in this row, well, let's see, you'll get 19, 20, 33, 34. So the magic number is 34. And then if you go down, you should also get 34. So 99 is 18, um, 20, 4, 34. Yep, so this way it's 34 as well. But the interesting thing about this magic square is, first of all, the artist, Durer, included the date that he made the engraving. And notice if you, these are things that your student will discover. I think you, in the lesson, you do point out that the date is there, but you're going to ask questions of your student to see what patterns your child sees. But I'm gonna just point out some to you. So if you added these two numbers together and these two numbers together, you would get 34. Same with here and here. Also, this square in the middle, 10 plus 11 plus six plus seven. Just rewrite that one there because I went over it. Also, this quadrant here, and this one, and this one, and this one, all of them add up to 34. Also, you can go diagonally and get them to add up to 34. So um, th this is really cool to see all of these patterns that you can find in the magic squares. And I wanted to point them out to you so that you can see how easy it is to um, just keep exploring these magic squares and see where it takes you. Okay, so after that fun exploration, um, I want your child to complete the worksheet and answer the questions and then the in conclusion question at the end. You can end this lesson with a quick game of mixed multiplication cards, which is P7 in the Math Card Games book. So for lesson 26, this lesson's entitled Terry's Way to Subtract. The objectives are to review subtracting and to learn another way to do it. There are at least eight different ways to subtract multi-digit numbers, and exploring other methods can help your child understand what's going on rather than just memorizing the algorithm, the one algorithm that they know. If your child has learning disabilities, however, 
learning this method may be just too much of a good thing. It's still worth giving the lesson a try, but the method does not have to be mastered. And that's true for anyone, even if they don't have learning disabilities. But I want you, uh, those parents who have kids with learning issues, to remember that these extras do not have to be mastered. You may find, however, that some of these variations actually work better for your student than the traditional method. So it's worth giving it a shot because it just might click easier for your student. Okay, so let's go. I'm going to show you an example of how Terry's method works. Okay, so here is the example 7,365 minus. 5,468 equals, and what Terry does is she subtracts 5,000 from 7,000 and gets 2,000. Um, and then she notices that she cannot subtract the 400 from the 300. So she writes down what, what the difference is. What, how many hundreds would we need in order to be able to subtract? We would need 100 more. So she writes down minus 100. Um, and let's see, with the ones, okay, with the tens, we could do it, 60 minus 60. And with the ones, we would have to do the same thing as the hundreds. So how many more would we need? That would be minus three, okay? Because we would need three more ones in order to be able to subtract. And that equals 1,897. Now, for me personally, I find it difficult to subtract going horizontally. I much prefer vertically. Funny enough, one of my kids um, actually really enjoys doing all of his math horizontally. So anyways, just to recap, 7,000 minus 5,000 is 2,000. 300 minus 400, we can't do it. What is the difference? It's 100, so we subtract 100. The tens canceled each other out because 60 minus 60 is zero. And then minus three. So we say 2,000 minus 100 is 1,900 minus three is 1,897. So that's Terry's method. She's basically doing it from left to right. Okay, so your game today is called Equal Remainders, which is S31 in your math card games book. In lesson 27, we're going to be looking at another way to subtract. This is another method that Terry came up with. This method is kind of like long division, at least that's the way I look at it. Um, it may be helpful for the visual child um, who struggles with the traditional method. So let's take a look at that. Our children are all different. And so um, view this more as exploring an interesting concept pointing out the fact that problems can be solved in many different ways. Um, and the method is the same as, yes, as last lessons method, but the problem is written vertically. Okay, so let's take a look at this example. So we have 6,509.10.2. Now remember, um, this is just a reminder to keep using the math way of saying numbers all along throughout the whole school year, even if you're mixing it up, even if you're saying sometimes 6,592, and then the next time you say 9102, that's fine. Um, we just want to keep reminding the kids of the math way of naming the numbers so that it makes mental math so much easier. Okay, now we're going to subtract 7,000, sorry, 3,700, 1108. And just like in the lesson before, we're gonna start with the thousands and say 6,000 minus 3,000 is what? That's 3,000. 500 minus 700, we can't do, but what's the difference? How many more hundreds would we need to be able to make that subtraction? We would need 200. So we write minus 200. 90 minus 10, is fine, we can just do that. We write down the 80. And then for the ones again, we're gonna have to find out what the difference is. So how much more, how many more ones are we gonna need in order to make the subtraction? We would need six more ones. So we subtract six, okay? 
Then we just add it together and it's easier to do it in groups. Um, you don't have to write this part down, but just for the sake of demonstration, I will. So what is 3000 minus 200? That's 2800. And then what is 80 minus six? That is 74. And you would add those two together, you get 2,874. So as I said, you don't have to write this over here on the right, but I did it just so that you can see what's, what's happening. And it may be helpful, I don't know, to your students. Okay, so I hope that that was helpful. After completing the worksheet, go ahead and ask the in-conclusion question and then play on the number negative five, which is game S28. We do have a blog about this one. It is included in the blog for on the number 10, which you may want to play as a warm up just to get the brain juices going. Um, because negative uh, on the number negative five, it's a really fun game, but it's a lot more challenging than on the number 10. So you might want to play that first as a warm up. Anyways, I'll leave that in the description below. So lesson 28 is our final lesson for this week. And I love it when the review lands at the end of the week. That just makes the week feel to me at complete. Um, it doesn't always happen, but it's nice when it does. So as I've said before, you can choose how you wanna use these review sheets. You could use it as a pretest and a test. So you'd use both of them, A and B. You could just use it as a quiz. And if they do well, you just use the one. Um, you could use it as a review worksheet. It's really up to you. Remember to have your student write down the oral questions, the answers to the oral questions only. Don't write down the equation that you say. Um, and then after checking the answers and correcting any mistakes, play the multiply and add game, which is P34 in the Math Card Games book. And then have a great week. I hope to see you next time for lessons 29 through 32. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.